Who among you here can explain what is digestive system? Where can you find your digestive system? Stomach. Yes, in the stomach. So this is made up of organs. So what are the organs including uh, within our digestive system? Yes, we have stomach, intestines. What else? Esophagus. Okay, see, so in our digestive system, we have alimentary tract. When you say alimentary tract, that includes our esophagus, our stomach, our colon, our intestine, the small and large intestine. And the other one is our accessory organs. Accessory organs means your liver, pancreas, okay, gallbladder. Okay, so those are accessory organs. They are all in your, you can find it in your digestive system. Our digestive system breaks down food into protein, vitamins, we have minerals, carbo carbohydrates, and fats, which we need for energy, what else? Growth, Growth and yeah. repair. Okay, so we need carbohydrates, fats, what else? Proteins, minerals, minerals, minerals and vitamins. vitamins. Now remember, there are three classes of nutrients. Okay, the first is water. Take note, not all that I'm saying it can be found in your modules, okay? The three classes of nutrients. Water. Water is life. Okay, can we live without water? No. no. We cannot live, okay? Water, the second is the food yielding or energy yielding food. Okay, energy yielding food. What is under energy yielding food? Carbohydrates. Very good. What else? Proteins. Fats. Okay. And the third class of nutrients is micronutrients. So what is micronutrients? Okay, we have minerals and vitamins. Okay, those are the three classes of nutrients. Now, we eat food and break it into tiny pieces by the use of our teeth. Okay? And we swallow it with the uh, use of our tongue and saliva. It goes to our pharynx. Our pharynx is the throat. And it goes to our esophagus. Okay, when it's already in our esophagus, it goes to our stomach. In our stomach, it is mixed with our digestive enzymes or gastric juices. Okay? After they mix it in our stomach, it goes to our small intestine. In our small intestine, nutrients are absorbed. Okay, they absorb all the nutrients. We know what are the nutrients now, okay? Now, after absorbing all the nutrients in the small intestines, the residue goes to your large intestine. And when we say residue, that is already the waste from the food that we eat, okay? It's the residue from the last large intestine, water and solid separates, and it goes to our rectum, to our anus, and pass as waste or stool. So that is the simple physiology of our digestive system. Next is endocrine system. The endocrine system is made up of group of glands. 
that produce the body's long distance messengers, or we call these hormones. Hormones are chemicals that control body functions, like metabolism. Okay, so what is metabolism? When your food converts into fuel. Okay, if you have fast metabolism, what happens to your body? Oh, small. Yeah, because the, con the fuel, okay, the conversion of fuel is fast. Okay, how about if you have slow metabolism, a person gets fat. Like this. <laughs> okay, so metabolism, growth, and sexual development. So we have uh, hormones for female, we have estrogen and progesterone. Okay, for male, we have testosterone. Okay, we have the glands, hypothalamus. We have gland there, pineal in our brain, pituitary gland. In our thyroid, we have the parathyroid and thyroid gland, and thymus in our heart, adrenal gland in our kidneys, and pancreas. Okay, what hormone is uh, produced in our pancreas? Insulin. Okay, insulin. And we have the gonads. For female, the gonads for female is the ovary. They produce estrogen and progesterone. And for the male, we have the testes, and they produce testosterone. Now let's go to your immune system. The immune system is our body's defense system against infections and diseases. Okay, we have organs, tissue, cells, and cell products that work together to respond to dangerous organisms. And substances that may enter into our body from the environment. Okay, you know that envir our environment has microorganisms. And when they enter our body, our immune system fights against those viruses. And later, uh, we will know what are the responses, body responses to microorganisms. Okay, so immune system, the mucous membrane in our nose, lymphatic vessels, tonsils, thymus, lymph nodes, your spleen is under immune system. Okay, your skin Though the skin is part of your integumentary system, it is also a part of your immune system. And your bone marrow and lymphatic vessels. Okay, lymphatic system. Lymphatic system and immune system, they are both defense system of our body. So it fights again microorganisms and uh, these viruses and bacteria. Okay, so we have lymph nodes in our body. Okay, you observe if you have cough or you have respiratory infection, this lymph nodes here is being inflamed. Okay, if you have wound here, the lymph node here is inflamed as well as in your legs. So we have uh, inguinal lymph nodes. Okay, so those are the lymph, uh, they are part of your lymphatic system. How about muscular system? Muscular system is made up of your tissue that works with the skeletal system. So they work together, okay? They work as, uh, they share, okay.
Okay. So, our muscles are attached in our bones. So, they work hand in hand for movement of our body. So, we have three types of muscles. Okay. First is skeletal muscles. Okay. You're right. Skeletal muscle. The muscles found in your arms. Okay. The muscles that are found in your legs. Okay, and they are what? Voluntary. What do you mean by voluntary? When you say, I want to run, they start to move. Okay, I want to jump, they start to move. Okay, we have so many skeletal muscles. Even the muscles here. If you will say, I will chew the food, I will eat. They start to move here. Masseter's muscles. Okay, in your arm... Also, when you say, I want to lift something, so they start to move. Okay, I want to lift an object above my head high. To get from the high cabinet, so they start to move, lift Lifting. the hand. They lift. Okay, another type of muscle is the smooth, smooth. muscles. Okay, smooth muscles, they are mm -hmm. found in our uh bladder urinary bladder uterus and our stomach and intestines they are involuntary what do you mean by involuntary they cannot be controlled so they have they work by themselves and the only muscles that found in the heart is the cardiac muscle Cardiac muscle, C-A-R-D-I-A-C, cardiac muscles. It's the only muscles that you can find in the heart. And they are also involuntary. They work 724 lifetime. You cannot control the heart to stop or else you will die. Okay, so they work in a rhythmic motion or movement what is rhythmic they contract relax okay contract and relax okay, that is a rhythmic movement now we have major muscles in our body so it's um it's there yeah you can read in the muscle system we have deltoid okay and mud the name of muscles are derived in the characteristic itself of the muscles. Okay, when we say uh, biceps, there are two heads and here. Triceps, there are three heads. Okay, so whatever is the characteristic of the muscles, it was their, their name was derived from the characteristic of the muscle. Next is nervous system. The nervous system is made up of the brain, okay? Not only the brain, including your spinal cord and your nerves. And one of the most important system in your body. And we call the nervous system as your control system. It means it's just your computer. Like your computer, it controls our body, okay? They receive and send messages throughout the body so we have the brain the spinal cord which is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are your nerves your reproductive system we have male and female reproductive system for female this allows uh, human to produce cells. Okay, and also the same as male, okay? The female cannot produce human without the male, okay? So they both, they are both a human producing children, okay? So the sperm from the male and egg cell from the female, they unite, okay? And that union, we call it fertilization, and the fertilized cell, we call that ovum. <laughs> Okay, and it becomes a zygote. Okay, or the fertilized ovum 
becomes a zygote and it develops into an embryo. And that embryo develops to a fetus until the time the baby is already 37 to 42 weeks the baby will be delivered from the mother and we call that term baby okay <clears throat> below 37 weeks we call that preterm baby how about the respiratory system a respiratory system brings air into the body and removes carbon dioxide and that includes the nose, the trochea, and lungs. Okay, so from the nose, the air goes to our trochea. And on the trochea, it branches into two. We call that branch bronchi. Okay, because we have two lungs, the left and the right. Okay, on the right side, we have three lobes. On the left side, the, our lungs has only two lobes because the heart is there, okay? A uh, major portion of the heart is situated in our left side. Then the bronchi branches into smaller branches, and we call that bronchioles, okay? At the end of the bronchioles, there is a great uh, like structure. We call that what? Alveoli. Alveoli. Alveoli, very good. They are air sacs, okay? Where oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange happens. So when you are a smoker, okay, you target the alveoli. The alveoli dies, okay? And you will have emphysema. And later, you will have COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Now, the skeletal system is made up of your bones, ligaments, and tendons. It shapes the body and protects the organ. Okay, so here in our pectoralis, okay, and in our thoracic cavity, it involves or includes your ribs and your sternum. What organ is being protected here in this part? Yes, heart and lungs. Your pelvic cavity, okay, you have the bones here, pelvic bone. What organs are protecting? Reproductive. We have urinary, okay part of urinary so they protects organ and it shapes our body for our okay how many bones 206 bones found in our adult okay 206 Next is urinary system. The urinary system eliminates waste from the body in form of a urine. Our blood goes to our kidneys and our kidneys filters the waste. Okay? That uh, blood uh, waste from the blood, it combines with water to form a urine. Okay, so the, you, the water that goes out from our body, this is already waste. Okay, we call this urine. In our kidneys, we have what we call romeroli. This romeroli are the unit function, or functional unit of our kidneys. If in our lungs, we have alveoli, that is the functional unit, because they are air sacs. In our kidneys, the functional unit is the glomerula. They are the one that filters the waste, okay? The blood inside our body, okay? It goes to our kidneys, it filters, then it combines with water and out as urine. Okay, they go or they pass into the two tubules, we call that ureters. 
Okay? And attached to a receptacle which is the urinary bladder. Yeah. Once the urinary bladder is full, then it will be excreted through the urethra. And that is your waste, which is urine. Circulatory system. The circulatory system is the body's transport system. It transports what? Our heart transports blood. Is it only blood? Nutrients. Okay? They transport blood to our cells and including nutrients to our cells. The heart pumps blood and the arteries and veins transport it. So it's the arteries and veins that transports your blood and nutrients. Can you find the circulatory system? It's in the first page because in my, you know, in my slides, it's the last. Huh? No, first page in your module three. Is it, did you find? Yes. Yeah, it's okay. it's in the first page of module three after human needs. Yeah. Uh, circulatory system. Okay. Okay. So the blood okay, from the heart, which is already oxygenated, it is transported in all parts of the body. Now, what if it's unoxygenated from the lower extremity and the upper extremity they goes to the heart and from the heart they is being transported or pumped into the lungs to pick up those oxygen in the lungs and from the lungs this will go back again to the heart and the heart will transport the blood including the nutrients in all parts of our body Integumentary system. Integumentary system is the largest system in our body. And the largest organ is our skin. Okay. Integumentary system consists of our skin, hair, nails, and exocrine glands. There are three layers of our skin. The epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. Okay, we are now in the physiological changes. When a person or an individual is getting old, okay, what are the physical changes or yeah. physiological changes in the integumentary system? Loss of pigment and hair. Yes. You, have, you can observe the hair, the skin of an elderly. There is loss of pigmentation in hair and skin, wrinkling of the skin, thinning of the epidermis, and issue bruising, tearing of the skin. So if you're taking care of an elderly, make sure you have to apply oil or lotion on the skin. Why? Because there is a decreased skin torture, elasticity, subcutaneous fat is also decreased. Okay, that's why it's sad. Okay? And increased nail thickness and decreased nail growth. There is decreased perspiration, dryness of the skin, and itchiness of the skin. So if the skin is dry, then it becomes itchy. So they are starting to scratch the skin. And also, you have to keep the nails short and clean. Why, if they scratch the skin and the nails are long, so what happened to the skin? It will be crushed. Yeah. Yes. There will be bruising, okay? Because the epidermis, which is the first layer of the skin, is becoming thinner, okay, for an elderly. How about neurological system? Their nerves, what happened to their reflexes? Slowed reflexes, there are slight tremors. What is a tremor? 
Those are shaky. Okay? And difficulty in fine motor movement. Even picking, you know, a cropper, it's very hard for them to pick. But fine motor movement. Loss of balance. Increase incidence of awakening after sleep onset. So they can sleep faster. They were able to fall asleep, but they can also be awakened. Okay. And increase susceptibility to hypothermia. What is hypothermia? This is low body temperature. Okay. Hyperthermia. Increase body temperature. Short-term memory decline, decline possible and long-term memory usually maintained. Event that happened just yesterday. Try to ask an elderly. They cannot remember. Ask them, who is that lady sat beside you yesterday? They cannot remember. No. I have nobody with me yesterday. But, Try to ask, who is your boyfriend before? They can still remember. Okay, long-term memory usually maintained. When uh, my uh, grandparents are still living, I usually, I enjoyed asking, uh, listening to their stories. Because their love story before the World War II is very clear in their memory. So they keep on telling their love story to me and I listen very well. Okay? So elderly, short-term memory declines but long-term memory maintains. Musculoskeletal system, their muscles and their bones, what happen when they grow old? Decrease muscle mass. Decrease muscle mass and strength and atrophy of the muscles. Okay, so decrease mobility, they cannot move faster mm -hmm. compared when they are still young. Range of motion, okay, when they try to lift their hand, they cannot lift it 90 degrees, only halfway. Flexibility, they cannot even flex their hand. Okay, coordination and stability. Chains of gait, before when they walk, they walk straight. Then they all, they stoop down, okay, and they walk. With shortened step, but wider base. So a wider base, they are balancing. Posture and status decreases, causing a decrease in height. Increased brittleness of the bone, because from 40 years old, your calcium level in the blood decreases. Then you are prone to osteoporosis. Deterioration of joint capsule components and increased convexity of the curvature of the spine. How about cardiovascular system? Okay, cardiovascular is your heart and your blood vessels. What happened? Diminished energy and endurance. <coughs> if you're taking care of an elderly, don't let them jog. Don't let them do cycling or swimming. Their endurance is diminished. The energy. And there is lower tolerance to exercise. So what is the best exercise for elderly? Walking. When they walk, you should be at their, you should be beside the, the client. Yeah, because uh, anything they might Trip, they can, they might fall. Okay, diminish compliance of the heart muscles and heart valves becomes thicker and more rigid. Decrease cardiac output and decrease efficiency of the blood return to that. So you know everything is decreased when you're small. Everything is increased. You're going high. And you're already 50 years old, you're in the level. Then going 60, you're going down. That is life. It's the sad reality of life. 
Life is so short. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it. But it should be meaningful. Yes, exactly. It should be meaningful. That's right. Not just enjoy. Yeah, not just enjoy. Enjoy that you're hurting somebody, you know. But you make a life to the fullest and meaningful. That when you will be gone, somebody will remember you as a good person. Okay, decrease resting heart rate. Weak peripheral pulses. When you try to uh, feel the pulses, not only here, down in your legs there are pulses. It's very weak. Or sometimes you cannot feel anymore. Okay? Increase blood pressure, but susceptibility to postural hypotension. So what is susceptibility to postural hypotension? You know your client is lying the whole night in bed then you just let them stand what will happen they will feel dizzy yeah. why huh? why there is a sudden drop of your blood pressure that is hypotension hypotension is low blood pressure so don't let the patient stand immediately or let your patient walk okay your patient is lying down, let him or she, okay, first sit at the edge of the bed. Okay, let her sit first, maybe five to ten minutes, then after that, can let him stand. Respiratory system. Decrease stretch and compliance of the chest wall. Decrease strength and function of your respiratory muscles. So for your patient will have this difficulty of breathing when they are already old. Decrease size and number of your alveoli. Okay, you know what is alveoli? The air sacs. Okay. Respiratory rate usually remains unchanged. There is depth, decrease of respiration and oxygen intake. Okay, because when you inhale, the muscles help okay, to stretch so that you can inhale. But when it's already, if the, your client is old, there is what you call by decreased strength and function of your respiratory muscles. So your a client cannot breathe well. Okay, the muscles cannot stretch well. Decreased ability to cough. This is very common. Okay, remember that elderly is high risk to pneumonia. Okay, when you're already 60 years old, try to have this vaccine. Okay, pneumonia vaccine. And when they develop pneumonia, they will have cough, secretions in the lungs. And you try, you ask them to cough out. <coughs> They don't know. Decrease ability. <coughs> Only here. The sputum cannot go out. So we need the help of suction machine. Okay? We need the help of suction machine in order to cough or we, in order to expectorate the phlegm. How about immune system? There is tendency for lymphocyte counts to be low with altered immunoglobulin production. What happened when the time, uh, what is this? Uh, pandemic. They don't allow 60 years old to go out. Okay, because they have low immune system. Decrease resistance to infection. infection and disease. Okay, now we have to discuss the three responses. Okay, the first response of our body towards microorganisms in our environment, we call this anatomic response. Okay, how this anatomic response work? They prevent Okay, from the substances, threatening substances to go inside our body. Example are the mucous membrane in our nose. 
Remember that viruses can enter our nose, our mouth, and our eyes. So there are those um, parts are coated with mucus. Okay, we have mucous membrane. Now they get rid, and we have also cilia. Okay, cilia are the hair like structure. You see your nose. You have hair in your nose? Yes. Yeah. Well, then what is the function of the hair? Why God gave this no uh, hair here? Uh, ah, to like get rid of those what? Uh, micro uh, yes, threatening micro substances. Micro okay, you are not part of this body. Go out, go out. <laughs> that is the function of your hair in your nose, okay? And that is your anatomical response. Now let's see. If it fails, that substances from an environment was able to go inside, what will be the next response of your body? We have the inflammatory response, okay? Our inflammatory system works by excreting invaders from our body by sneezing, runny nose, and even fever. So when you have fever, your body is responding to the my uh, substances, threatening substances, bacteria and viruses. Now, when the inflammatory fails, okay, maybe COVID is very strong and was able because you are not uh, wearing your PPE. COVID enters our body, okay? They enter our body, but the body cannot recognize this COVID. Oh, the, is it this my friend or enemy? Okay? And that virus were able to enter the body. And our body will say, oh, welcome, my friend. <laughs> because they cannot recognize if it is an enemy or a friend. Yeah. Oh, you're my friend. Come on. You're welcome, especially in my lungs. And that COVID virus penetrates your lungs. Okay? Now, this immune uh, inflammatory response phase, the next response is your immune system. Now, that a microorganism, when the body can recognize that this is an enemy, the lymphocytes or our white blood cells multiplies. And remember that the white blood cells are body soldiers. Yeah. Okay, they are body soldiers. You observe that when you're sick and the doctor will say, okay, take your blood test. CBC, complete blood count okay and they will go directly to the result of your wbc when your wbc is high it means you have infection because the time that the microorganism is inside your body the response of our body is to let those lymphocytes or your blood uh, your white blood cells multiply that's why during your examination you have high WPC, okay? So they will multiply because they will fight against those microorganisms or those threatening substances. And that um, lymphocytes, they also travel to our lymph nodes, okay? <coughs> Lymphocytes, lymph nodes, okay? They belong to the lymph nodes. So they go to the lymph nodes and they produce antibodies. And those antibodies will be the one to fight against those viruses and bacteria. So how wonderful is our body. Now take care of your body. Don't abuse your body because it is wonderfully made. Your GI system or your gastrointestinal system.
that is G. It is not highlighted. I know. Hydrogen. Yeah, G. Okay. Gastrointestinal system decreased need for calories because of a lower basal metabolic rate. If you are still young, so you need more calories because you are hyperactive. Okay? But when you are old, already old, so, uh, yeah, you are just uh, staying at home. You are not working. Decreased need for calories. Decreased appetite. Thirst. And oral intake. Okay? Decreased lean body weight. Decreased stomach emptying time. You notice your grandparents. You're already hungry, but for them, they are not yet hungry. They have decreased stomach emptying time, increased tendency towards constipation. Why? Because they are inactive. They don't work. They always lay down, sit, okay? And they don't drink more water. They have increased susceptibility for dehydration. Okay, tooth loss and difficulty in chewing and swallowing. So you have to crush or grind or mash or blend the food of your elderly patient. And give them time to chew and swallow. Don't then give again because you're in a hurry. I have to go home. I have to go home to make a move. Okay. Endocrine system. Decrease secretion of hormones. Okay. Do you think that a 60-year-old can still produce a child? No. No. Okay. Decrease secretion of hormones. Decrease metabolic rate. Decrease glucose tolerance. So when you are already 40 years old, even now 30 years old, and you're having diabetes or high blood sugar level, then you are already in type 2 diabetes, <coughs> mellitus, because of insulin resistance. Renal system or your kidneys. Decrease kidney size, function and ability to concentrate urine. Decrease glomerular filtration rate. Okay. You still remember the glomeruli? It's the functional unit of your kidneys. They are the one that filters. Okay? Your blood, the waste in your blood. When you're already old, there is a decrease. Glomerular filtration rate. So the filtration rate of your kidneys is decreased. Decreased capacity of the bladder to hold urine. Okay, what do you, my grandmother, when we, he, she told me, I will go to the bathroom. And the time she, she's walking towards the bathroom, she's urinating already. <laughs> then when she reached the bathroom, she said, kalas. <laughs> Finish. Why? The capacity of the bladder cannot hold the urine. Okay? Increase residual urine. All of us has residual urine. When we are urinating, that all the urine is being excreted or discharged. Okay? And increased incidence of infection because of the increased residual urine and impaired medication excretion. <clears throat> Reproductive system. Decreased testosterone production for the male. Size of the prostate gland. For the male, they have high risk for prostate, cancer, okay, leading to urinary problems, decreased secretion of hormones with the sensation of menses for women, vaginal changes, decreased muscle tone and lubrication, and importance. <clears throat> so aside from the uh, body system, the senses also is being affected. Okay, when you are old, like decrease visual acuity. Okay, today because of um, the technology, small children they are having thick glasses. 
eyeglasses. But my grandmother before, 80 years old, she can still read the Bible without eyeglasses. Decreased accommodation in eyes requiring increased adjustment time to changes in light. Decreased peripheral vision and increased sensitivity to glare. Breast biopia and cataract formation. Possible loss of hearing ability. Okay, so uh, old person or individuals, they have difficulty of hearing but don't shout at them okay when you shout at them the more they cannot hear you press biopia cataract formation the whitish spot on the eyes inability to discern taste of food for you it's salty for them it's not or for you, it's not salty. For them, it's salty. Decreased sense of smell. They cannot even smell their poop. Changes in touch sensation. They cannot determine what is hot and cold. And decreased pain awareness. Sometimes they, they were pricked with a sharp object. And you can see the foot bleeding. But for them, it's not painful. And all of those special senses I observed from my grandparents. Psychosocial concern. Okay, so when you are still young, save for your retirement. <laughs> Adjustment to deterioration in physical, mental health, and well-being. Threat to independence functioning. And we have Fear of becoming burden to our children or to our loved ones. Adjustment to retirement and loss of income. So when you're retired, you have no more income. Loss of skills and competencies developed earlier in life. Coping with changes in role function and social life. If you're already 60 years old, you cannot go anywhere we want to attend the birthday party of our friend we cannot attend without somebody with us okay but in the philippines we have uh, more programs for the senior citizen you want our senior citizen to be active okay they have the senior citizen day and they are you know having parade and dancing Diminish quantity and quality of relationship and coping with loss. Dependence on government and social system. So you should have your pension from the government. Okay, for the Philippines, you have to update your SSS. It's already uh, mandatory okay, for the pension. Access to social support system and cost of health care and medications. So your pension will only go to your medications. Medication. A sad reality. Mental health concerns. Depression. So if you are not successful in your life, so you feel that you did not make up your best during your younger years so you feel depressed because there are uh, there are things that you should have attained when you are still young and increase dependency you depend on your children but uh, we should not do that. No, we should not depend on our children. So we experience helplessness, hopelessness, lower sense of uh, self-control and self-esteem. And this all leads to self-worth. So you feel that I'm not worthy. I live my life not worthy. 
or my life is not、uh, worth living. And these changes interfere with your daily function. So you isolate because、uh, you know every time you have class reunion. I know all of us are having class reunion, and you know the class reunion. What is happening when they say, "Oh, why are you fat?" <laughs> Or if you're saying, "Oh, why are you like that?" Before when we are in high school, you have. Wow, buddy! Now what happened? And why have you you have no children yet? You did not get married. All of that, all of those things are questioning you. That's <laughs> my friends and I don't want to attend class reunion. Everything they are questioning: Why are you fat? Okay, why you did not finish your, you know, your everything is a question. And you have that loss of contact. You isolate because you are not successful in your life. Client reacts to the perception of loss. You feel, you grieve, you feel sad, including not only physically but psychologically, social, and your spiritual aspects. Then client is alone because you isolate. You decide to. Contact with your friends, but you cannot make up this contract. And the last some, they commit suicide if they will not overcome depression and grief. So they commit suicide. This can lead to thoughts of self harm. Okay, we are now in social、uh, personal hygiene. Is there any question before I proceed? It's already two thirty. Personal hygiene is very long. Okay, guys, I、um, advise you to go to my channel. Okay, watch personal hygiene.、Uh, next week, because of it, maybe we have no class. You have more time to read. Okay, Re read the module and watch the. Video, okay. Then I will go directly to the、uh, demonstration. I will demonstrate how to do personal hygiene, from oral hygiene, shampooing of the hair, bed bath, perineal care. Okay. Then after my demonstration, that's the time you have to return your demonstration or your actual demonstration. With the class, so you have、uh, to pick your partner. Okay, your partner will be the one to give birth to Andrew. <laughs> okay, that dummy there. Okay, any question? No. Oh, what will? What is our time? Until three thirty. Is it three thirty or three? Three thirty. Three thirty. So we have still time. I thought it's three. Because I have my CNE class after. Okay, let's continue. Okay, just listen. Okay. Now, personal hygiene. We start from oral care. Oral care or mouth care. There are two kinds of patient: independent and dependent. For dependent client, it means the client is depending on the caregiver hundred percent. Those clients are the unconscious clients or totally bedridden. Okay, for independent, they are not only allowed to go out from the bed, or they are restricted to go out on the bed for some medical issues, like when they are pregnant and they are bleeding. So the doctors advise to have CBR. What is CBR? <coughs> hey, you're done with your、C、medical abbreviation. Cardiovascular. No, CBR. Okay, complete bed rest. So they, the doctor will say, okay, you are in complete bed rest without bathroom privileges. So even you poo and pee, it should be on the bed. So that patient is independent. They are not unconscious. They can participate in the activity or the task while in bed. Okay, for oral care. 
for dependent client, you position your patient and uh, <clears throat> the head part is elevated and the head is side. Okay? Place the middle towel and the kidney tray. Okay? And you need a suction machine to suck or to remove the contents from the mouth. Now, for dependent client, never use toothpaste. Never use toothbrush. Okay? You need foam swabs. You need a tongue padded depressor, suction machine, and antiseptic solution. Okay? That is for dependent. Then, while you're cleaning the mouth, you must place the tip of the suction machine. Because the patient cannot, you know, remove those contents from the mouth. It's the suction who will remove. That is for dependent. How about for independent? Let the patient sit on bed. Okay, place the middle towel. And you provide all the things she needs. Okay, let the patient participate. Maybe the patient can brush her teeth. Then you can use toothpaste, toothbrush, and water. Okay? That is your oral care. Now, after providing oral care, bring the patient at the edge of the bed. Okay? This is the edge of the bed. You bring the patient with the use of your draw sheet. Ask somebody to help you to lift the patient. Now, never uh, provide personal hygiene alone. Especially if your client is very big and you are small. <laughs> okay? So ask somebody to help you. Just don't lift your patient on the shoulder. You have your draw sheet that can help you lift the patient. When the head is already at the edge of the bed, remove the pillows. Place the underpad under the shoulder and the head, then you have to place the shampoo tray, okay? We have no shampoo tray here, but in the hospital, we are using shampoo tray. At home, if there's no shampoo tray, then you have to roll the macintosh or a towel, place it here on the neck of your patient. Place, what, both cotton balls and cover the eyes so that water can go inside the eyes, cannot go inside the ears. Now, before you wet the hair, especially for female client, you have to brush the hair to remove hair tangles. Okay? When your client is uh, sleeping the whole day and it was not combed or brushed, what happened with the hair? It's tangled. Now, it's very hard also to, to clean. Okay, So you have to brush first or comb the hair. Then it is already brushed, then you have to wet the hair. Then shampoo, massage the skull, okay. Rinse and hair, uh, hair conditioner if the patient or the relatives wants to have a hair conditioner. Then wash and dry with a towel placed under the head. How many minutes, madam? How many minutes? When you are bathing the cloth, there is no uh, such, uh, you know, uh, time, specific time. time. Specific uh -huh. time. But you have to make it fast, okay? You make it fast, gentle, and it should be complete. Okay, don't shortcut. <laughs> Why? Because the patient also will get cold, cold. Yeah. okay? But before that, remember to off the AC. So every procedure, uh, the SOP is you have to explain to the patient. If the patient is unconscious, then explain to the relative what you're going to do to the patient. Then bring all the equipments to bedside so that you cannot, you will not go back and forth, run to and fro, because you forget or you forgot to get the shampoo. Bring them all to the bedside, and then you have to off the AC, provide privacy, put on your apron, your hand washing, and your gloves. Okay, so that is the SOP before you go to the main procedure. Now, when you're done with shampooing, you have to wrap the hair. 
okay, with the towel and return the pillow. Now, next is the face. Okay, on your face, you have to prepare two basins. Okay, they should be warm. Test it with your elbow or the back side of your thumb. If the patient is dependent or independent, then let the patient test the water itself. Now, make a meat. Then provide two meats in each uh, basin. One for washing, one for rinsing. Now, make a meat. Then start first from the eyes. Okay. This is the meat. You use each corner of each eye okay from inner to outer then the next corner from inner to outer why not the same if this eye is infected then they use the same corner here you are just introducing infection to the other eye so you have to use it each corner in each eye okay remember to rinse Never apply soap on the face except if the client has special soap on the face. Now, after the eyes, the face. From here, here, back of the ears. Rinse and the same procedure on the other side of the face. Okay. Then you must place a bath towel on the chest part. Then you use that to tap and dry the face. So after the face, go to the arms. When the bed is against the wall, start from the far arm, far leg. When you can go to the other side, then start from the near arm, near leg. Okay? Place a towel under or underneath this arm. Then start from the wrist to the elbow, elbow to the shoulder, axilla and hand. Okay? Then, after that, pat and dry, go to the other side of the arm. After the arms, the chest and abdomen. Don't uh, uncover the patient. So, you have to uh, wash the chest and abdomen under the towel that was covered, covering. Always provide privacy. Okay? So, after... Washing the chest and the abdomen, pat the chest and abdomen with the use of the towel covering the chest pipe. So after we are done with the upper extremity, before you go to the lower extremity, you must first change your gloves, change your water, and change your towel. So you need four towels. Okay? Two towels up. Two towels down. Okay. In your lower extremity, place again a towel underneath the legs. Then you start from the foot joint. Foot joint to the knee, knee to the thigh, and foot. In your foot, you can wash it directly on the water. It's more comforting. Okay. It's uh, washed directly on the water. Now, you pat and dry with the towel placed underneath the leg. Now, after you're done with the uh, left leg, go to the right leg. Next is perennial care. In your perennial care, you have to make a four folds. No longer a mitt. Okay? So, this is the towel you have to fold into four. Remember, in your perineum, you start from front to back. Okay, from the front going back. At the back, you have your anus. So when you start from back to front, you're introducing bacteria to your urethra. And that bacteria will enter to your bladder. It goes to your kidneys and you will have urinary tract infection. So start from front to back in one direction, not like this. Okay, when you do like this, the patient will see it. Okay? So never do that. Only one direction with one meat. Okay, I will demonstrate that, okay? Next, after the perineal care, turn the patient on the left because you have to clean the back. Place the towel at the back of the 
patient. Okay? Then you have to clean the back. How about the buttocks? The same as the perineum, you make four folds. This time you have to start from back to front. So it's the opposite. Okay, in your perineum, front to back. In your buttocks, back to front. Okay, so after that, tap it to dry with the towel placed at the back of the patient. Then after that, don't place the patient back on the position. Instead, you have to roll, loosen all the linens, okay, on the bed, and you have to roll them towards the back of the patient. So that part now is vacant, then you have to clean the mattress. Okay, start from head part to the middle, middle to the foot part. One direction, not like this. One direction. Okay. Because if you do like this, this is already clean. This is dirty. You are just introducing again to the cleanest part. Okay? So you have to do like this. Okay? Then dry the mattress. Once it's dry, so you have to start to make the bed on the vacant mattress. Or on the right side. So when you make the bed, always start from the bottom, then your rubber sheet, then your draw sheet, and you have to place the um, under pad and your diaper. Now this side is already clean, then that's the time you have to roll the patient towards the clean part of the mattress. Then remove those soil linens. Now remember, we have clean linens, infected linens, and dirty linens. Infected linens are those contaminated linens with discharges, like urine, blood, stool, okay, and body discharges. Place them on a yellow plastic bag and seal. But if the linens is only dirty, without discharges, you can place it directly on the hamper. Okay? And how about your diapers? Your underpipe? Throw it directly on the yellow bin. Never place soiled linens on the floor. Okay? So you have to clean again that vacant mattress. The same thing that you do it to the other side of the mattress, then pull those linens at the back of the patient, then tuck them all together, make a mitre corner. Then after that, change the pillowcase. The opening of the pillowcase should be facing the wall, not the door. Okay? And place your top sheet and your blanket. So after that, raise the side rails. Okay, our bed or the hospital bed has their own side rails. Never leave the patient unattended. Or if you leave the patient without anybody, you must raise the side rails. Or else your patient will fall. Okay, so raise both side rails and place back the collect. Okay, if the patient is independent so you ask the patient that this is your whole life so anything any help so just press the whole life bring all the things to the proper places then remove your apron remove your gloves do hand washing and document okay so that is your personal hygiene so two weeks from now because then Next week we have no class. The next week, okay? I will directly show you how to do the personal hygiene and after that you will do the demonstration. Okay, any question? Wait, I'm going to sign here. Today is April 16th. 
Anthony. And the next is Ellie. Is this Judith? Robin. Shifa. Shifa, this is your last. Patricia. You must ask. The yellow paper from the room. And uh, Patricia. Ah, Patricia, you have your sorry. This is yours, Patricia. Ah, here, yeah, there is your. Yeah. And. Uh, Dorcas. Hilder. Maripé and no Novabi. Uh, sir, nandito ka last week? No, I'm not sure. Oh, kaya pa. Okay. How about you guys? It's not here. Maybe it's there with them. Okay, you can uh, ask from them. Don't forget to write your attendance today. Okay, guys, uh, you are now excused. See you after next week. So after next week, same, go back to the same time? Oh, uh, they will message. Yeah, they will message. I, I have no updates. So.